My name is Melissa Davis and I own Melissa Davis Designs and we're here today in a loft I designed for a client of mine, Assad, um, who travels 50% of the time for work. In the entryway, I wanted this to be the first impact for the rest of the design of the space. So I did something kind of bold and I created this great overall feature wall. It's a new product, I've not used it before, 32 by 32 panels that they actually get plastered in place. So when people come in, they know something special is going to happen in the rest of the space. So to update these builder grade cabinets, I sent the doors out to be sprayed. You can do that to any carpentry shop, furniture maker. It was about $1,000 to have the doors sprayed and then we just site painted all of the valances and the, the parts that are attached. If we had done a new kitchen, that would have started around $10,000 with labor. So for the island, I wanted something that was a bit industrial, so I found these great husky storage units. These are garage storage units, Mandan style. But I loved the gray, I loved they had stainless and locks. Um, and then just to integrate the wood and make it a bit more sophisticated, I used butcher block. It's just butcher block and the carpenter uh, did the two sides, screwed it all together, it was really easy. So the counter used to be a dark kind of brown black granite, it was a bit dated. Uh, so I changed that out to this, it's Granite Transformations. I love this product because they install with 24 to 48 hour turnaround. Um, it's a composite, so it's heat resistant, antimicrobial, and I love the light bright color. So to create the illusion of more space in the living room, I got rid of the huge TV unit, I put the TV over the fireplace, and then rather than a big chunky bookcase, I incorporated that into the wall flanking the fireplace, so it became a feature. And then a sectional, believe it or not, opens the space up because you have one piece of furniture and you can hug the walls, which makes all of this open floor space. So overall, we wanted the palette to be neutral so that it can grow with him and if it's rented out, um, it doesn't offend anyone's sensibilities. But we wanted some fun, so I brought in hits of red. This vintage rug really was the kickoff point, and then from there, it's red accessories, kind of these woven pillows, and little hits of fun like the poof. So to use wood paneling and not have it look like your anti-70s basement, you have to just use it sparingly. So don't do all the walls in wood, but choose selectively. So here it really was this hotel style. Uh, so we flanked the bed in the wood, and then by adding another texture, another element in the middle, it broke it up, not 70s. This bathroom used to be blue, black, smoked gray, glass. It was dark and dated. The tub was fully recessed into the floor. It was a hazard. I kept picturing people falling, falling into it. So I raised the tub up. Um, I changed everything to this light, bright porcelain tile. It's porcelain, it's not real stone, so we don't have the maintenance issues, especially if he's going to rent it out while he travels. Um, and it's a bit less expensive. But we did splurge and do this beautiful rain head handheld shower system. This is hotel style. I got creative quite a bit in this space trying to save money and, and uh, use different materials. So one of those is the drapery. I actually use cheesecloth. It's a dollar a yard. It's a bit fragile, but it's in an area where you're not touching it a lot. And I love the kind of diffused light that comes through. And then the other thing was the floors. This is laminate. It's not an expensive wood floor. This is $2 a square foot. It's hard wearing, which is great if you're going to rent the space out. Uh, and it looks great. In this renovation, there was a lot of existing maple on all the doors. Um, and I learned the impact that you get when you actually maintain those but stain them dark. It was design changing for the whole palette. And it was free. 